Hello. I uh, I may have pressed that button a little prematurely, but nonetheless, I did. And uh, Cowboy Jim, uh, Fort McMurray, Alberta, Canada, uh, up here in the north. And uh, I've mentioned a few times that we mine oil, and um, and we mine the oil in the sand where the oil has collected for um, some would say one weekend or a millennia. I'm open to God. Uh, long, short, we're here. It's the way it is. Anyways, I had the privilege of being asked uh, by my son uh, to go hunting with he and his family. And um, um, I, I had taken on uh, four days of overtime and um, after my seven regular uh, day shifts, and I did the first day, uh, and I thought, I am tired. Like, I'm just wore out. And unfortunately, I was on a whole truck and not a excavator or a, a dozer, which is so much easier on on uh, an old uh, retired rancher's body. And uh, actually, it's it's more fun, too. And um, at the end of the day, I, I, I mentioned to the supervisor, I said, brother, um, I did my seven day shifts on one day of overtime. I said I put in for four days of overtime because I was pretty sure uh, I, I would just be staying in the north. And um, I said, I'm tired. Eh? He said, if you're tired, don't don't come in to work tomorrow. I said, sir, uh, will it mess up what you have planned for tomorrow? He said, no. He said, there are plenty of truck drivers that I can call. And um, and there are. We're, we work in the mines up here. We actually make a really good dollar. I mean, well, talk about uh, a decent income. And, and I, I, I do mean a decent income. And, uh, and well, what 74 and a half year old man um, can break 127,000 uh, last year? I did. Uh, and I only worked um, seven on, seven off. And, and they know how to pay up here in Fort McMurray. And I, I know how to work. So it's a great combination. Okay. I went, um, I went home after work. Uh, my, that would be my eighth day shift. And I was so exhausted. And uh, so I texted my son. And I said, uh, when, when are you headed? north and so on and he asked if I would go and and I was so honored by that and I ended up um they had a they took pictures uh of um myself um my eldest son that would be Scott's miracle you have heard me mention Scott so many times I have another son his name is Joe and he has two sons Jake and Jericho and um, and they um, are good people. With my elder son, um, my two grandsons uh, stood in the picture. <clears throat> and I wish I could have shown it to you, but God has seen fit that something with my phone's not quite functional. So the picture did not come through, but that's okay. That's 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 the way God had it planned. I mean, if God wanted me to hold the picture up in front of you and show you um, my son, his two sons, and Cole Martin, the country music recording artist, holding uh, Towns Martin. Um, and so we had four generations standing in front of the outfitter's tent for generations. That does not happen often. And um, of of Irish uh, Martin Ranch Cowboy Hunters Fishermen, all oh, that outdoor stuff we as a family love. 
And we also talk about God because we too love God. And God has given us purpose. And that's the great joy. I, I marked up my nose. Oh, geez, bridge of my nose. I think that's what it's called. Um, uh, my son has a couple of side-by-sides and uh, they're um, uh, off-road uh, vehicle type things. My other son has a, a, a horse and his lady has a horse and and they're they're more into horses as as I am. I confess, I I I love sitting on a horse in the mountains where Scripture is fulfilled. In that, in Scripture, it says, "All nature cries out as to the very existence of God," and it does. So we we hung out around the campfire and all that stuff. And my both my sons are gourmet cooks. They're also truck drivers and they're also cabinet and carpentry uh, people as well. Uh, we have always made a living uh, by the skin of our teeth uh, until we came north and uh, or I came north and could start running heavy equipment. And that's been a, a blessing from God. And and we we had so much fun and um, didn't see any. Well, we did see, but we didn't get a shot at. Uh, I I was uh, using my crossbow um, in that I I use an Excalibur crossbow uh, because back in '85 uh, a scaffold fell over and. I did a handstand from 13 feet in the air and uh, and uh, landed quite safely, except I broke so many body parts, at least. It wasn't a direct result of getting bucked off a horse, which has happened quite a bit. But anyways, um, we had fun. And I I had to fulfill my responsibility to work. I could have phoned and asked if they would allow me to have one extra day. Um, I think I I was about uh, eight hours, uh, four south, uh, three uh, west, and and then a couple north into what is called Grand Cache. And Grand Cache is where uh, 30 clicks south of Grand Cache is where my cousin, Gilbert Martin, um, an uh, outfitter, a professional hunter, uh, ran his uh, guiding business for 27 years. And it was such a joy to drive past where in 1972, I had gone with my lady, uh, the mother of my two sons, and we had uh, met uh, this Gilbert and Shirley Martin um, and their family. Oh, dear Lord God in heaven, their family, cowboys like nothing you have ever seen. And I I mean that sincerely. I watched my one cousin, I, I won't mention his name, but um, the um, two oldest boys, I think, and uh, one passed in, in a, a skidooing accident, and, and the... the um, uh, cowboy hero of mine, I watched him one day uh, buck out a horse that bucked as hard as any horse could ever buck in, say, the Calgary Stampede. And in Calgary, uh, if you stay eight seconds on a bucking horse, um, and it really bucks, and I'm telling you this, I almost remember that that horse's name. Uh, not quite, but it's there. And it was a uh, it was a mayor, and she was violent, and and my cousin he rode that thing four, not eight seconds, closer to five minutes, and perhaps longer. I just I just stood there in awe, and I I am no cowboy. I have spent a lifetime, I guess, on horseback and stuff, and a retired rancher and. Oh, oh, that, but I never saw an expose, uh, a tutorial 
on how to sit on a bucking horse like my cousin uh, did. It's Gilbert's son. Gilbert has passed, so I can use his name, I believe. Um, it was it was an honor. Anyways, uh, I, I didn't want to miss work because that's called my responsibility. And, and uh, so I headed south uh, out of uh, Grand Cache, where they uh, do uh, coal mining. And I worked in a coal mine down south in the Crow's Nest Pass, just over inside BC. And I mean, it was it's it's dangerous work. But in Grand Cache, they're digging coal, uh, open pit, at the top of the Blessed Mountains. And I thought, there's no way, eh? There's no way I would drive a, a haul truck down a blessed mountain like Crow's Nest Pass was bad enough. Oh, it was, it was, but up in Grand Cash works. But we do things under the unction of the Holy Spirit if your heart is right with God. And if it isn't right with God, you can make it to be right with God. And anyways, uh, bit of do and uh, headed south. And in a little place called Hinton, Alberta, uh, I pulled in there and I, I wished I had a picture uh, that I could show you of my giant Dodge one-ton dually uh, club cab, big Cummins, nice Cummins, and uh, j truly a cowboy truck, huge tires, all that lift, all that stuff. And I pulled into what is called uh, the Rancher's Restaurant uh, in Grand or in uh, Hinton, and uh, uh, finally we were getting service uh, in the north. Not much service on the cell phones and so on. And 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 I went in, and uh, and a lady, a little Filipino lady, she uh, um, gave me my seat at the table, and I I looked at the menu. I couldn't believe it. Like, um, I don't eat much, but when I'm looking at a menu, uh, there's a mental problem that I have. I order much. I order quite a bit. I did. And it was the biggest breakfast I probably could ever have eaten, and I couldn't eat at all. And it was so cheap. I mean, it, it was um, it was like not half price to what we pay in Ford Mac. But but ten dollars cheaper than what we pay up here, and every bit is good. And I mean every bit is good. And I I I looked at the lady, and and I I'm always attentive to the Lord, <sighs> suggesting, uh, asking, are you not going to share with this lady? And uh, I said, you know I will. And uh, so I. I, I told the lady, I said, I said, woman, well, I have to walk out to my truck uh, uh, to get my phone uh, so that I can show you um, this thing I have on my phone, a uh, YouTube channel called Cowboy Jim. And uh, she said, OK, I said, I want you to know uh, I had just finished my coffee. I said, I'm not going to run. I said, I'm I'm coming back in. And uh she didn't realize my truck was at the back of the the restaurant, uh, the back side of the restaurant. And w when I walked back in, she was standing, staring, trying to see which uh, eighteen wheeler I'd climbed into. And I I, I had a pleasant talk with her, and uh, I said, uh, "This is uh, the story behind my Cowboy Jim YouTube videos." And nine, this is nine hundred and forty four, I think. And uh, I told her the story of my elder son, um, who I was just hunting with, and and uh, how he had been so terribly injured as an 18-year-old, and God had miraculously healed him. And I feel so sorry for people who have not 
had God heal their children. And the loss of a child is a terrible thing. It should be against the law. And and I've prayed about that much. And, and I've said, God, don't uh, please don't let any of my kids, grandkids uh, pass before you take me home. Um, break my heart. It, it, it would be so painful. And I know that I've talked to people and I've told them my son's miracle and that God saved him and healed him from a broken neck, a crushed skull in a coma. God woke him up, got him out of bed. Uh, he got dressed and uh, two hours later, that boy uh, went from the surgeon saying there's no hope for this boy to that boy being so perfectly healed when he woke up. 20, 20 hours after being in a coma from falling 18, 20 feet onto his head. And I mean, that boy was healed and God healed him. And I, I, I remember one man, wonderful guy in dread, not down South and all, all that stuff. And, but this guy said to me, he said, I'm glad your son was healed. He said, but my son died. And I thought, oh dear God. And I don't know why uh, God heals one and and takes another home. I don't know. I mean, I've joked around. I said, uh, only the good die young. Well, that means Irish people are going to live a long time. But it's no joking matter. It's no joking matter. And my heart's been broken by people who have lost children my my very own sister lost her son, her 40-year-old son, to cancer. I thought, my, how, like, I don't want to, I don't ever want to be able to say I empathize with you because that would necessitate the losing of one of my sons. And in my genetic gene pool, we only throw sons. And, and that's the way it is. But anyways, this little Filipino uh, lady uh, she started to talk to me and she was, she believed in God and Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ, uh, resurrection from the dead, uh, the unction of the Holy Spirit and so on and so on. And she started to talk, to speak to me almost in a prophetic manner. Um, it used to be that I, I, I had a friend, big friend, and he, he would, uh, he had asked me to pray for him or I'd just jump in and pray for him. And he would say, seems like you've been reading my mail because the Holy Spirit would lead me to pray in a revelatory fashion, giving me a comprehension and understanding that, that, that only could come from God. And that's what this lady did with me, Filipino waitress. And I mean, my food, she brought my food. Uh, five minutes later, uh, we were still talking and I didn't think it was polite. I wanted to say grace before I started eating, but my food was getting cold. So finally, finally, uh, I, I, I just, I'm, I just started eating and she says, I'll leave you to your breakfast. I thought, thank you. But God used that lady to help restore me and my self-respect, so on. Life is tumultuous and we do not always behave as well as we should. I um, have contended all my life with having a very, very, very quick temper that I keep in check. And God helps me keep it in check until he, God, figures it's time for me to bend the knee a little bit more in the area of, of um, behavior. And I had screwed up a bit and it's, I don't take lightly when I fail because not only is there the scripture, it's just always be ready to give reason for your faith in Christ. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 
And I throw verses together like that. They're there. Um, I kind of paraphrase. I needed God to start healing me a little bit. And that Filipino lady, uh, uh, she, she wouldn't quit until, and I don't think she knew at all, but God was using her to help repair me. And so I thanked her and, and gave her an appropriate tip and all, all that stuff. And I, I'm, I went out to my giant truck and on my, on my tailgate is a cowboy Jim YouTube videos. And down the side of my truck is a cowboy Jim Fort McMurray inspirational YouTube videos. And I just want to encourage people. And I'm no theologian. I am actually a pretty normal Christian. And I do stand out from the crowd a bit, but it is not because of my intellectual prowess. It is because of my experience base of walking with God. And I I keep track as I'm going down the, the road. And boy, she was a long drive coming uh, south from Grand Cache down to Hinton, across to Edmonton, and then north four hours uh, to Fort Mac. And I got here early enough that I could get a really good night's sleep because I start uh, seven nights uh, shifts tonight. And that means I have to yet sleep a bit and so on. But God brought me through. That's what God does. People don't realize how much God loves you. He does. So much so that he and Jesus put a plan together where Jesus the Christ would, God's son, part of the Trinity, God the Father, God the, the, the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And Jesus had to suffer, bleed, and die on the cross to give you an opportunity to go to the cross, empty, empty cross. Jesus is not on the cross now. Jesus was crucified. Um, he was buried for three days, a bit Friday night, all day Saturday, a bit Monday, Sunday morning. And Jesus now sits at the right hand of God the Father. God and Jesus, the unction of the Holy Spirit, fulfilled a plan for you that would enable you to humble yourself and pray and, yes, turn from your wicked way, but to give you the joy, the privilege, the honor of saying such a prayer as this, God, forgive me, not because I sinned, that's silly. Forgive me because I sinned. That's that's silly. We are born into sin, a natural proclivity to sin. It's the way it is. The Holy Spirit speaks into your heart, my heart, convicts of sin. With the knowledge, the understanding, hey, I am a sinner. I don't say that about myself. I'm, I'm speaking for anyone who has ever said that because God forgave me of all my sin, past, present, future. I live my life. I try to live my life in honor of God by being kind, all, all that stuff. And, 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 and I do, I do try diligently to show people that I care. Um, a young man, uh, he, he stopped me. I was at a gas station fueling up. I have a very favorite uh, gas station uh, uh, at the bottom of uh, Highway 63, uh, owned by a uh, South Korean uh, husband, wife, and, and their sons. Their sons are off in university, of course, but 
and the lady is in a wheelchair. And I always stop there. And a young native guy, he walked up to the back of the truck. I said, brother, uh, he said, can you give me a ride? I said, no, I can't. I said, I want you to go around to the side of the truck. I want you to look. The front seat is totally filled. The back seat's totally filled. And and like all my camping gear um, filled the seats up. And I said, I can't give you a ride, but I want you to know something. I care for you. And so I, I demonstrated that I cared for him. I didn't give him a hug, but... I gave him a tiny bit that would help him through the day. And and it's really funny for me. It's really quite funny. I was fueling my big dodge and I I study my surroundings because I have been a scrapper. I want to I want to know who's approaching me. There was no one there. But then there was um, a native man not 10 feet from the back of my truck. And I thought, where did that boy come from? And I was able to help him a tiny bit. And I, as I headed north, I thought, I don't, I, I didn't see that man. I'm, I'm not saying that he was an angel. I'm saying I think he could well have been an angel. And I had reached in my wallet and I, I have a little variety of bills in there and I was going to reach for the smallest one, which was still pretty big. And God, I heard the Holy Spirit. And so I knew I had to go for one of the biggest bills. I did. I handed it to him. He just stared at it. And I said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not turning my back on you, but I can't give you a ride. But I can help. Perhaps your day go better. I did. That's the way it is. Now I headed north, and I thought, I wonder if that's another angel that I met. I know I've met a few. I know, I have met a few. God says, tell you. The story. Uh, I had been lost in Peterborough, uh, Northern Ontario. I had never heard wolves howling. I was 18. I was hunting with a friend. I had skirted along the bottom of a cliff and uh, the pack of wolves had chased a deer and the deer almost came right over. Um, uh, it, it, it wouldn't have been much of a fall. I could have slid to the bottom where I was standing. And I uh, and I would have had a deer and a pack of wolves and wolves kind of caused me some concern. I've since learned uh, bear aren't that much fun. I wrestled one, uh, trained one, uh, mountain lion, uh, cougar, big, big mountain lions. They're no fun at all. I shot one with an arrow at 18 feet when it was attacking my cousin and I, uh, wolves, I, 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 I would shoot them but I'd like them not to bite me while I'm shooting them. I'm a, bit, I'm a bit selfish that way. I walked out through a muskeg swamp. It was late October. Uh, I broke through. Uh, I was wet to the knees. I got to the other side of the swamp. No one around. I mean, no one. I was lost. I mean, I could have backtracked for a couple of hours on, but there was just enough snow. You had to look 20, 30 feet from one bunch of snow. And it, it, it would have been arduous. And it was nigh unto dark. And it was cold. And I was wet from the knees down. I got down on my knees before God. And I said, Father, can you show me the way out? I opened my eyes and there standing in front of me was a, a man dressed in camel. I don't even think he had a rifle. I didn't see a rifle. He stood there. I got up. Tears had been streaming down. Hey, I was down to my last cigar. Okay. And I was out in the bush. You know, don't start smoking. It's not good. 
I walked over to the man. I looked at him. I said, sir, can you show me the way out? We, we, we made this staggering eye contact and he just turned and pointed and I looked where he was pointing and there was a blessed road. I could not see the road from where I walked out of the muskeg swamp, getting cold, wet to the knees, hypothermia. Hey, I don't carry much uh, fat on me. Yeah, she, she would have been there. I looked at him. I said, sir, thank you. That man did not say a singular word. Nothing. I headed up over the little knoll that I couldn't see the, the trail out. I got on the trail and I boogied her out to where we had left the vehicle and got warm. That's my God. And people say, well, why doesn't God do that for everyone? Because God is God. He says he blesses whomsoever he will. Would, would, would you uh, bend the knee and thank God for saving your sorry buns? If he had, if you had been me instead of, um, you had been me instead of me. Would you have given God the credit? Would you have taken the time to say, God, I may be crazy, but you are convincing me more and more that you are real and that you love me. Well, that's the way it is. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but rather have everlasting life. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus said, there's no other name given unto man whereby ye must be saved. I, I, I tell you how I do things, eh? If something turns out good in my day, I give God the credit. I thank Jesus. I thank the Holy Spirit. I give God the credit. I won't take credit for what God is doing. This YouTube channel, I don't take credit for it. Because I know in whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he, God, is able to take care of all that which I commit unto him, and I screw up. I screw up. I am so blessed real. <laughs> One day, God and I were talking. That's called praying. People don't understand that, but I, I do this. I, I look away. When I look away, I have a question. and By the time my eyes get back in front, uh, God's already given me the imparted thought. That's how God and I communicate. I had said something. Uh, he said, you are a natural man. I said, I really am. I said, hey, in this instance, you made me. I am your servant. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you this question under the unction of the Holy Spirit. Are you God's servant? Are you God's adversary? Are you the one who is totally ambivalent to the possibility that there is a God? Do you kick against the pricks. I don't mean people you meet at work who aren't nice. Um, they were um, a structured thing on a chariot, uh, and the horse would, if it went to kick the blazes out of the chariot, it would hit these sharpened uh, pricks uh, on, the, on the chariot. Okay. Do you kick against the pricks? 
Do you turn your back on God and say, it does not matter what you do, what you say, who says it does not matter. Like the scientist I met in Calgary, he said, I refuse to believe in God. I will believe in anything except God. Are you in that group or are you thoughtful enough that you would say to God, if you are real, I want to believe in you. If you're not, I don't. But if you are real, could you show me? And it's not like you're asking for a sign necessarily, because uh, uh, Jesus was asked one time, uh, give us proof, uh, do a miracle. Uh, Jesus said, no, the only sign will be the sign of Jonah in the whale's belly for three days, spewed out on the beach. Jesus was in the bowels of the grave of the Joseph Arimathea's loaning of his tomb. And people choose not to understand because they choose to believe anything except God. But if God has touched your heart, if God has touched your heart, consider saying a prayer like this, your words, not necessarily these words. Consider saying, God, forgive me. I accept that Jesus Christ is your son, that he, Jesus, suffered, bled, and died on the cross. Buried for three days, part of three days. Rose from the dead. Jesus had said, I have the power to lay my life down and I have the power to pick it up again. And he does. He has given you the choice. You choose. Ye now what you wish to believe and you walk in it because you are going to live until you die and only you can determine where you spend eternity and that's the way it is. You'll never be able to blame God ever because all mankind goes through some bad, rough times. It is what character is within you that shows up when you are in adverse situation. It's your call. Humble yourself and pray, and your name will be written into the Lamb's Book of Life, wherein you are guaranteed, according to God's word, to spend eternity in heaven. It's your choice, heaven or hell. God bless you. God says it's enough. He says, I gave you a, a chance, a choice to humble yourself and pray. He gave you that chance. I just, spokesperson here, among many, and it's up to you. So God bless you. You all take care. Um, four generations in my family, we went hunting. I, I just thank my son for taking me along. I, I just honor God that he gave me my big son, Scott, back and, and big Joe in another complete situation that is a mind bender. But God did that. That's our God. That's my God that I serve. Who and what is the God that you serve? God bless you. You all take care. You, you have a good day. I'm getting ready to hit the sack for a little bit and, and um, uh, get up and, and go to work. God bless. You all take care. Thank you.
Amen and amen.